Hello, everybody. Welcome to Critical Beauty Salon. Today, tonight, wherever you are, I'm so happy to bring back Destiny Wagner, Miss Earth 2021 from Belize. So we're just waiting for her to log in. If you have any questions for, um, for Destiny, please feel free to type them in the chat box below, and I'll be more than happy to read them back to her and uh, so she can answer them. So we're just waiting for more people to show up, and hopefully our lovely guest will arrive anytime soon. So are you excited about Miss Earth 2022? I am. I mean, after three years of absence physically, um, this year's pageant, which will take place in the Philippines, will be hybrid. And they, the pageant kicked off with the virtual activities, starting with the introduction and uh, of, of all the contestants, as well as a little presentation of their favorite fauna. The theme this year is uh, Miss Earth Fauna. And basically, all the contestants uh, have to promote their favorite animal, uh, which is obviously a habitat in their country. And most of these animals, or some of them, um, are actually in date. Uh, included in the endangered species. So I'm glad that Miss Eric is finally acknowledging and recognizing the importance of, of preserving and saving endangered species, and not only wild animals, but also domestic um, animals as well, stray dogs, stray cats, unwanted abandoned animals, so forth and so on. So I'm very glad that Miss Earth has, has taken the step to promote animal welfare and animal rights. So let me see. So again, if you're new to this channel, welcome. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and um, like, comment, and share this channel. And please help my channel grow. Thank you. All right. Come on, Destiny, where are you? Okay, I think, let me see, I think it's midnight. It's about 12.02 a.m. In, in Manila in the Philippines right now. So I guess most of you guys are, are asleep or have gone, have gone to bed. Because early, early today I was watching the um, introduction of the candidates from the, Amer from, uh, from the Americas. And let me tell you, this group is so strong that it's so difficult to just pick the best. Um, I have at least, at least seven favorite girls from that group. And the other day I was watching the Africas, another strong group. Um, I have about like six or seven favorite girls from, from that region. And of course, from um, Asia and the Pacific, again, an amazing group. Um, there's so many strong candidates this year and it's just so hard to pick, you know, which one actually will win. I don't, I don't, ha I don't have any clue. I don't have any idea who's going to win Miss Earth 2022. Do you? You know, if you do, let me know. Okay, our first visitor, Jazz, 02909. Hi, Jazz, how are you? Thank you for watching. If you have any questions for uh, Destiny, please feel free to uh, type them in the chat box below and I'd be more than happy to read uh, the question back to her. Yeah, so how's everybody? How's everybody um, in the Philippines? How's everybody in Belize? Okay, as you know, Destiny is the first ever Bel uh, Belizean contestant to ever win an international major beauty pageant title for her country. So that in itself is a big honor. And when she returned to Belize for, the, for her homecoming, she was given an amazing, um, amazing homecoming parade. And I remember when I, the first time I actually interviewed her uh, back in February, I believe, February 22nd this year, she talked about how uh, the people just welcomed her you know, with open arms, they were so joyful, they were so very, very happy that Belize has finally been placed on, on the pageant map. And also, a lot of people have not heard of, of Belize. It's a small country which is situated in Central America and is actually uh, facing or uh, touching the uh, Atlantic Ocean. So yes, so now everybody knows where it is. And I heard it's a beautiful country, a lot of the uh, tourist attractions, um, I've never been there myself, but I'd, I'd love to. 
and I've seen beautiful videos and photos and images of the country. So yeah, so excited. Hello, everybody. All right. If you have, again, to those people who just joined us, please feel free to post your, co your comment or question, and I'd be more than happy to uh, read them back to you. So we're just waiting for Destiny to uh, log in. Um, let's see. Okay, we have a question. Hi, Jerry. Jerry1221 is asking, when is Destiny going to the Philippines? I'm sure Filipinos are excited to meet her. You know what, Jerry? I have no idea, but I think she mentioned on her one of her uh, uh, Instagram stories that she can't wait to go to the Philippines. So I guess she will eventually go to the Philippines. I mean, I think it's only it's only rational that she go to the Philippines to crown her, her successor, don't you think? So... All right, so while waiting for, for Destiny um, to show up, I hope the connection in Belize is, uh, is good. Uh, while waiting for it to show up, um, let me see. Okay. I, while waiting for it to show up, I recommend that you guys check her Instagram account because she has so many amazing images and videos and and, and uh, pictures up there and did you know i mean did you know that she made it on the cover of harper's bazaar magazine the vietnam edition so the first time i saw that wow you know i mean there's one gorgeous beautiful woman on the cover of a, of a fashion magazine one of the uh, most popular and biggest fashion magazines in the world so i was so happy when i saw her on the cover as well so yeah, so she's going, um, I think this woman, after she finishes her reign, she's gonna go too far. That I can tell, I can predict. Yes, Jess, so am I. Jess is, is saying, looking forward to her visit to Manila and see her finally wear the real Miss Earth crown. Okay, so um, yeah, of course, me too. Uh, not only that, but I, I'm sure, you know, Filipinos being the most hospitable people in the world, always welcome, uh, they're you know, foreigners, especially foreign beauty queens with open arms. As you know, Filipino culture is very rich and abundant in beauty pageants and they treat their uh, beauty queens like royalty, like national heroes. So that's one good thing about uh, Filipino culture that I really appreciate. And yes, um, this, this, do we know how many contestants are actually um, competing this year, I think? The last, the, I think the last count was like 89 or 90, I believe. So people tell me, please, exactly how many countries are there. Okay. Destiny is in the chat room. So let's admit her. Hey. It says connecting to audio. Okay. Can you hear me? I can hear you perfectly, young lady. <laughs> now, I want to make sure that there are no dogs barking. <laughs> my dog is outside sleeping right now. Um, my neighbor's dog, however, he may or may not bark, but right now he's pretty quiet. Okay, that's what her, because the last time I heard, what is that? Is that her dog barking? You know, get her out of the room, get her out of the room. <laughs> so <it's> like, okay. <laughs> and, you know, I actually just um, came back home this week, like a couple of days ago, because I now live in Belize City. So I haven't seen my dog and my family in a really, like, in a while. So I decided to come home for the week before I head to the Philippines. Okay, that's wonderful. You know what? Yeah, that's one question that our viewers are asking uh destiny when are you going to the philippines i'm sure filipinos are excited to meet you so tell us an idea when i am scheduled to be going um the first week in november first week of november yes yeah, so i haven't gotten my ticket as of yet but i am scheduled to be going literally in less than a week so Ooh. i will so i'm just waiting for the final update oh. but, so are you really you must be really very excited huh <laughs> I am so excited. This month has been really busy for me compared to the rest of the months, uh, but I'm going to the Philippines. I'm 
It is. Yes. Yeah. A lot of fans are actually, you know, waiting, waiting for you to, uh, to arrive. And I'm sure, you know, Filipinos, of course, love beauty queens. Uh, pageantry is very big in the country and they treat beauty queens like national heroes, like royalty. And I'm sure you'll be one of those royalties, baby. Let me tell you that. <laughs> so, okay. you know, yeah. Well, okay. The last time we spoke to each other was back in February. Um, that was, I, I, I was thinking maybe we can probably pick up where we left off back in February. And I went back to your calendar of activities and events on your social media. And I was like, I was like immensely like surprised and impressed by the activities, by the abundant number of activities that you have engaged in as Miss Earth. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, you're also probably one of the most traveled beauty queens this year. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Anyway, I want to, okay, let's start with, I'm looking at the calendar. <laughs> That's usual. I, I, okay, good thing you have the calendar there because I don't have the calendar right next to me and I've done so much. So, <laughs> okay. Well, I come, I come very prepared because I've been stalking your social media account and just thought, and oh my God, she's, she went there. Oh my God. She's been there. Oh my God. I've never been there before. I want to go. I want to go. I'm, I feel so jealous. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. All right. March 4th, earlier this year, you went to Los Angeles and you hooked up with Lindsay Coffey, mm -hmm. Miss Earth 2020. Do you remember? And also the director of Miss Earth Vietnam. Yes. Yes. You didn't stay there very long, did you? I literally stayed there for one day and I had to <laughs> come back to Belize. So it was a very like last minute shoot, but it was for Harper's Bazaar. So obviously I'm definitely not going to miss that. And it was my first time meeting uh, Miss Ng and she was absolutely fabulous. And she invited me to Vietnam literally that night. And I think in about like two or three weeks, I was off to Vietnam. Okay. Well, you know what? Let's talk about your Harper's Bazaar cover because before you showed up today, I was just talking to, uh, to our viewers about that. Actually, I want to, I want to share that wonderful picture. Do you see? Can you see it? Yes. Yes. I love this. This cover is just so sublime. It's just so artistic. Um, Harper's Bazaar is one of my favorite fashion magazines. And of course, you know, it's, it's, a, uh, it's one of the world's biggest and most glamorous uh, uh, fashion magazines. When I saw this, oh my God, I don't recall of any other major beauty queen to have made the cover of Harper's Bazaar, um, maybe you know, maybe in the past, but not you know this day and age. So when I saw that, wow, this, I, I just love the whole your whole makeup, your whole hairstyle, uh, you know, the mood that you're projecting. And tell us, tell, tell us about that dress that 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 clothes that you're wearing. What is that? What I currently have on, or what's on in the the photo shoot? Okay. Which one? Is it the is it is it black the one the one on the cover is that is oh it black? okay so that's actually a leotard really yeah so it's a leotard and I had on like high waisted uh, not high waisted um knee high black boots on the shoot okay um, and my hair was actually in a bun and I took out the bun and these are barrel twists that's what we would call them barrel twists and that was on the bun and. I like to play around with my hair a lot because a lot of people think that there's not a lot you can do having locks. However, that's definitely not the case. So I said, hey, I'm going to flip oh, no. my hair. Yeah. Can we get a motion shot? And that's kind of how it came to yeah. life. So how long were you at the studio for this particular shoot? We were at the studio for a few hours. I had three different looks. So, and it wasn't just me. Miss Ang, so we had we had a lot of different looks, but it was yeah. really, it was a really fun shoot. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, and you know, again, you know, I think that's the advantages of being a, a beauty queen is that you get so much exposure, and I think that's why whoever wins Miss Earth, you know, will have a, a full year of glamour, a full year of of, uh, you know, engaging in all these amazing opportunities. And of course, it's, a, it's, it's one of the biggest, perhaps the biggest platform to promote your environmental advocacy and whatnot. So um, 
Speaking of Vietnam, we have we have a viewer from Vietnam. Hello, Queen Destiny, Thank watching you. watching from Hanoi, Vietnam. That's great. That's wonderful. Um, Globe Trotter says, "Hey, Rafa, I can't wait to meet Destiny in Manila. You know what? She can't wait to meet you, uh, Filipino fans as well. So I'm. It's, it's going to be a blast. I, I can just feel it." So now, March 6, two days um, after you're back to Belize, March 6 uh, actually marked the International Women's Month. And um, when I saw your posting from that date on your Instagram, you know, it, it prompted me to, to, to wonder, to ask you actually, you know, do you think there's still sexism in the world? And do you think there's still inequality among, you know, between men and women? Yeah, I think that there is definitely inequality right now in this day and age, especially when it comes to equal pay. You can have a man doing the same job as a woman, a woman doing the same job as a man, but because of their gender, they're not getting the same amount of respect or they're not, and they're not getting the same amount of pay. So it is very relevant and it's the topic that we have to continue to talk about in order to make changes. For years, women have been oppressed. And it's very unfortunate that in this year, 2022, that we are still fighting for the same things that our grandmothers fought for. Exactly, exactly. I just want to like share uh, your comment, your post, because I thought I, I think it's very it's, it's very deep and, and profound. Um, and I'm quoting you. You say women are multifaceted individuals, and oftentimes who are put into boxes and labeled with stereotypes and expected to stay there. Here's a friendly reminder that you do not have to stay anywhere. Enter that male dominated industry, start your business, travel the world, live your best life. We do not have to conform to society's unrealistic expectation of what a woman should do, dress, work, etc. nor should we be discriminated against for that very reason. We are free to be free. And to all the men in our lives, stand up for us. Together, we can break the, uh, the bias and live in a equal world. You know what? Bravo. Bravo, <laughs> for, bravo for saying that. Bravo for saying that. You know, it's very, very hard because, um, you know, sometimes I wonder, you know, um, even though um, our society, at least in the West, we have, we have made so many advancements as far as, you know, improving the lives of women. And of course, especially also young girls, there's still so much stigma attached to, uh, you know, to, to, to them being, being engineers, being construction workers, being architects and whatnot. Those professions that are traditionally considered as male professions, there's still some people in society you know, who still think that women can be as great as men in those professions. But then again, you wonder about the professions that are traditionally considered as women's professions like teachers, nurses, uh, uh, daycare workers. A lot of men have also entered those exactly. fields. You know what I mean? And so they're I, like praised for it. And, and they're praised for it, but not women when, when, they're, when they're architects and lawyers, et cetera, and everything. So yeah, so I think there's still so much stigma attached to that. And I think eventually we will, we will surpass that. We will overcome that stigma. It's only a question of time. And I think also education. So yeah, so that's good. We're progressing towards a, a better uh, relationship between men and women. Great. Now on March 8, 2022, during the International Women's Day, you also advocated, of course, gender equality in relation to uh, the Break the Bias 2022 theme of the global holiday celebrated to commemorate the cultural, political, and socioeconomic achievements of women. And you were Belize's Ambassador for Sustainable Tourism. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. You welcomed uh, your fellow beauty queens, right? Your queen sisters. Of course. So March 8th is actually my birthday. So I was born on International Women's Day. Um, yeah, so being the Sustainable Tourism Ambassador of Belize has probably been one of the highlights of my year. I've been able to work closely alongside the Belize Tourism Board and come up with fundraise to promote our beautiful country of Belize, as well as to promote ecotourism and bring awareness uh, to our country. So having have won this title, it just made sense that I use my platform to promote Belize and every positive thing that we have going on right now. How did, so how did your sister Queens like, like, like Belize? 
I feel like they enjoyed it. The beaches were really nice. We had a great authentic experience. They had a local tour guide such as myself. We emerged in different food. They met some of my friends. So it's so funny to me and amazing as well when my friends from the pageant world meet my friends in you know, my real world and they just collide and get together. It, it was, it almost feels like a dream because I don't really picture these two worlds colliding, but I'm always happy when they do. Was that their first time to visit Belize for all three women? Yeah, that was their first time to visit visiting Belize. Okay, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Uh, a few weeks later, March 26, you went to Vietnam again. And this time, you know, in, in, in Ho Chi Minh City in Saigon. Um, during, and I, I, I wish I could pronounce it, but please forgive me. You know, I, I don't speak Vietnamese. During the Ho How Cac Dan Tok Vietnam 2022 okay. launching. Mm -hmm. Tell us about that. So they invited me to basically to help them promote the pageant as well as for recruitment. So they were, it was a press release said, hey, Vietnam, get ready. This is going to be the biggest pageant in Vietnam. We're looking for our delegate. We even bought Miss Earth to help us find the perfect girl. So it was such an amazing time. I had no expectations and I'm learning to not go into anything with expectations. But this place, if I had any, Vietnam definitely exceeded um, we were able to go visit multiple areas in Vietnam. I was able to learn more about the culture and meet all these amazing individuals, these young ladies, hear their stories, share mine. And it really was such a special trip for me, my first time in Asia. Um, and I can't wait. To, and I really can't wait to go back next year. Yeah, you were there for three. Oh, yeah, by the way, uh, Miss Earth 2023 will be held in Vietnam next yeah. year. So that would be that would be amazing. Now you were you were in Vietnam for three weeks. Uh, did you try all sorts of food? I would think I would imagine. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so originally, I was only supposed to stay for like less than a week, and I fell in love with Vietnam. So I was talking to Miss Ann, the director. And I was like, wow, like, I really love this place. I would love to stay longer. And they're like, oh my gosh, you should definitely stay. So one week, less than one week turned into three weeks. Three weeks. So I, try, I probably ate literally everything, um, which is good and bad because I have such a sensitive stomach, but my mind and my heart is always like, try it, try it, try it, try it. And I'm always curious. So yeah, right. I'm eating literally everything. So what, what was the most curious, what was the most interesting dish or delicacy that you've ever tried? Well, well, you were uh, there. <laughs> well, I love pho, so I definitely ate like so much pho. But they also have really good sandwiches, and then I had some snacks, and I love having like local snacks because they differ in every country. So I did eat snake skin, and oh. it was like like hot sauce or like pepper, oh. and I actually enjoyed it. So I'm not too too picky. I I can adapt anywhere. Do they it's eat? Yeah, do they do they eat bugs like uh, like cat caterpillars or crickets? Yeah, so my schedule I was on a very tight schedule, so I didn't get a chance to try as much street food as I would have liked, and to try their local snacks. Uh, so I did not see any. So maybe when I go back, I'll have to get a different, you know, do a different route. Okay, one well, yeah, and by the way, when you. Uh, you wore some of the most fabulous clothes designed by local designers, by local Vietnamese designers. You know, they're, they're very, very exquisite and they always look very, very expensive. We, did, did you get to keep these clothes or were they just loaned? So because I was only there for one week, I didn't have a lot of clothes. I was telling them, oh, I don't have a lot of clothes. They're like, oh, don't worry. So no entertainment, they definitely took care of me. So then at the end of my um, you know, when it was time for me to depart, they said everything on this rack you can keep and you can take home. So I was like, wait, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> so I wasn't able to keep every item that I wore, but I was able to keep a vast majority. And I was like so happy and thankful because pageantry, this industry is very expensive, you know, to get clothes, to get shoes and makeup. So I was very like grateful that they gave me those clothes. So did you end up like carrying an extra luggage? Luggage? So I had a stylist named Yuna, who I love. Shout out to Yuna there. And she was so amazing. She packed and literally squeezed everything together wow. to the point where I didn't need to get extra luggage. That's amazing. So, but you didn't have to pay extra for, for the extra weight, right? No, I didn't. Everything was included. Everything was like perfect. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, okay, Gary's asking, did you try 
you said you, you tried pho, which is a very popular pho, yeah. pho, pho. and also buncha. What is buncha? B u n. Is this some sort of sound? Is, is that like the Vietnamese sandwich? I don't know if I tried buncha. I don't know if I yeah. tried buncha. It's like French bread sliced, and then they put all these amazing vegetables and meat. Oh, and okay, coke. yes, 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 yes. Then I, yeah, yes. yeah. I think that that's it. Yeah, I, yeah. She definitely, definitely tried it. Jess is saying her glam photos, her glam photos in Vietnam are beautiful. Yes, I totally agree. It's it's a, it's a very unique um, glam shot. I've never seen that type of glam shot before. So that was that was a great job. Now, April twenty second, we all celebrated Earth Day. And then you celebrated that day with the Ministry of Blue Economy and Civil Aviation. And you ended up, of course, what did you do? You planted more trees, right? Yes. <laughs> you planted trees and mangroves. Tell us about the significance of planting mangroves, please. So mangroves are so important when it comes to climate change and especially with coastal communities such as myself. So if you are in a country or on an island um, and you have sand and you're right next to the water, please, please plant mangroves. Mangroves can prevent flooding. They also are home to various different species and they create and produce oxygen at a higher rate. So mangroves are key elements to coastal communities and countries that are surrounded by water because they can literally protect you all from natural disasters. Right. Not only that, but it, uh, mangroves also actually uh, slow down or actually basically prevent the erosion of, yes. the, of, of, uh, of the coastline. Now, mm -hmm. I have a question. I think this question could be very controversial. Um, what do you think, let's say, uh, uh, real estate developers who continue building hotels or condominiums or big houses, uh, close to the beach. What is your opinion? What is your take on that? So I feel like the tourism industry is always going to be expanding and looking for ways to improve, which I don't necessarily disagree with because a lot of countries such as mine depend on tourism. However, I think that there is an efficient way to go about it. So it's not necessarily always up to the developers and real estate people, but also politicians, the people who are in charge of assigning or giving them the paperwork and permission to do so. I think those are the individuals who need to be held accountable as well, because everything before you build, you have to have an environmental assessment to make sure that this isn't going to be damaging the area, the neighborhood, the community. So if we are just writing off and giving everyone permission without doing, without them doing their part, then I think that's the, that's a bigger issue than the developing. I totally, totally agree. You know, one thing that really pisses me off is that you have all these rich people, millionaires, billionaires, businessmen, entrepreneurs, Hollywood celebrities. They buy this $25 million houses on the beach. And, it, and the next day, you know, they're, they're preaching against uh, global climate and climate change, global warming, climate change. It, it, just, it just doesn't make any sense. So, you know, rather than listening to these rich people, why don't you listen to the locals who actually live there, who have been experiencing erosion and global warming and climate change for, for years and years and years. So. People remember that. <laughs> now, from Belize, you fly to Belgium May 8th to assist to, uh, the coronation of Miss Earth Belgium, or what they call the Miss Exclusive. Tell us about that experience. So it was my first time in Belgium and Belgium was never a country that was on my radar or on my bucket list. But Selena, my delegate Miss Belgium, my Miss Earth sister, my year, she would always go before me. It would be Belgium and Belize. So we developed a really nice friendship. So once they invited me, I was so excited to meet her and she showed me her beautiful hometown, her country, and the pageant was absolutely exquisite. It was very entertaining. The outfits, the costumes were spectacular. And me and Selena ended up touring. We did a little bit of touring ourselves after and we ended up in Spain for a week. Yeah, I was I was gonna say that, but but before we leave Belgium, uh, mm -hmm. tell us about Belgian food. Because when, when Lindsay when I I asked Lindsay because she, she was she was in Belgium, what was the most exciting food that she's she's ever tried? I think she said uh, waffles, Belgian waffles. Did you try Belgian waffles? <laughs> I did, and I was about to say the same thing. The waffles are really good, and I'm not I'm not big on chocolate either, but the chocolate is amazing. So 
but their waffles everywhere I go, like their packaging for food is so different and the flavors are so different. So in Belgium, you can get waffles in like, in like boxes, you could get them in fancy boxes. Just like in every store they have waffles and I'm like, wow, this is amazing. Yeah. Did you try uh, Bel the Belgian fries? Don't, don't call them French fries. It's an insult to the Belgians. Yeah, I did not try the French fries. I did not try the fries. And I love potatoes. Anything with potatoes, like I'm 100% down for, but yeah. I did not try the fries. So did you, did you get uh, to tour at least the, the city? Did, did you get to see the mannequin piss, the famous statue of a little no. boy? I did not get to see. I did not get to see that, unfortunately. Okay. But it Next just means time. I have to go back. Yes. It just means I have to go back. So I'm not upset. I'm very content, and I want to go back to all the places that I visited. Oh, you will. Yeah, you will definitely. Of course, you went to Spain after Belgium. You went to to Spain. You were there for how long? About a week. I was in Spain for about a week. Yeah. Did you stay mainly in uh, Barcelona? We yeah, had Selena and I were in Barcelona the entire time. We we lived our best life. It was such an incredible experience to, I was nervous at first to travel with someone because I usually travel alone. Um, but she was so excited and she was nervous for me for traveling alone. And I'm like, what? So she's like, oh, I don't want you to travel alone. I'll join you. And I was like, okay, but we've never met in person. So it could have been either really good or really bad. And I'm so happy that every, like our personalities just mesh very well. Um, she was definitely like a, a light this year of my reign. How did you find the uh, the Spanish people sexy? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, everyone in Spain is absolutely beautiful, gorgeous. The the language is so compelling, and we went salsa dancing, so that was fun. My legs are sore for like three days. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, at least you lost some some calories, you know, after having all yeah. these Belgian, Belgian waffles, right? <laughs> yeah, sure. Definitely, definitely. You worked them out. Now. Um, June 5th was World Environment Day, um, you know, which is, of course, a reminder that we have to do our part, our share uh, in saving, you know, the planet, Mother Earth. Now, um, that was, you know what, I've never heard of this World Environment Day until I actually checked your Instagram. I've never heard of World Environment Day. I mean, I've heard of Earth Day, obviously, and International you know, Women's, Women's Day, but not World Environment Day. So I had to do some, some a little research about that. But I, I, I guess it's great. You know, I think we have another day. You know what? Every day should be Earth Day, don't you think? Exactly. I was just going to say, I'm happy that they're coming up with more creative ways to spread awareness of the environmental state that we're in right now and climate change. So if there has to be a day for World Environment Day, World yes. Soil Day, World Tree Day, that's 100% okay with me. Like, yeah, let us me Yeah. But me too. Um, now, do we have a rainforest day? If we don't, maybe we should have a rainforest day. Should we have a world rainforest day? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it would be amazing. Uh, three days later, another special day was the World Oceans Day. Uh, to me, that is an amazing, that, that is a very significant and important day. Again, you know, we have to acknowledge the, the, the contributions of our oceans. Can you imagine our planet? Without I can imagine. I don't even want to imagine. I'm a scuba diver. No, 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 no. We need it. <laughs> and one thing, I think everybody will agree that uh, plastic is one of the worst perpetrators of uh, water pollution. There isn't a day that goes by in my neighborhood. In my, you know, I, I live not too far from a river. When I see a plastic bottle or a plastic litter, I automatically pick it up and put it in the trash can. That's it. <laughs> You know, but I hate the fact that people can still be so lazy and and careless and totally indifferent towards uh, plastic pollution. You know, you know, to our viewers out there, if you see plastic littered in the street, littered in your in your environment, please, please pick it up right away and dispose of it, uh, you know, appropriately, because if you don't do that, nobody else will. You know, you, you can't rely on, on others to do to do the cleaning for you, you know. So, yeah, I know, I know it's very annoying. You know, it, it, it's very uh, frustrating, but you don't have any choice but to do it. So, yeah, let's all love our oceans and our bodies of water. <laughs> now, June 13th, you went to Los Angeles. 
What'd you do? June 18th in Fresno. What'd you do? What did you do in Southern California? I'm trying to think right now because my it was so far, like far away. I'm trying to think. I was in Fresno, California. What did I in June, in June, in June? It was in in How was the weather? It, yes, the weather was nice, but it was June um, Juneteenth, which is the day that slavery in the USA was they it was emancipated. So that's why I was in Fresno, California. Now I remember. So my is a community ooh, a community activist in my my old neighborhood that I grew up in in Fresno. Oh yeah, that's I, right. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I went to high school in Fresno. So my friend is a community activist, and he invited me for Juneteenth. So I went to the community block party. And just showed face, engaged, supported local entrepreneurs. And it was great to visit all my, my old friends, my old family friends and classmates. So you had a, an amazing reunion. Yes, it was definitely an amazing reunion. So much has changed, but it was still good to see the community and what the community has been up to. Now, did your old high school do anything to acknowledge your winning this earth? I did not go to my old high school, but I'm still in close contact with my teachers, my old pre-teachers. So they, I, they just recently submitted an article about me that's going to be on um, their, maybe their email listing or something of that nature. But I do, plan, I do plan on going back. It's just so far and I haven't really had a lot of time, but I'll make the time soon. That's great. Yeah, of course. Yeah, one of these days. Um, reading some of the comments. Um... G. Grant says the Philippines is ready to welcome destiny with open arms. Yes, of course. You know what? Yeah, definitely. Ralph Samba, hello, Ralph. Says hello, destiny and Rafa. Uh, Erica says, I don't understand her question. It's destiny, where do you go on? Do you, do you understand what does that mean? Oh, where do go on? <laughs> What does that what mean? Go on. That is in Creole. It means what's up, what's happening, okay. what's going on. Oh, okay. How you de do, she asked. How you de do? <laughs> how you de do is like, how am I doing? Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. That's interesting. I'm learning. I'm learning some Creole. Thank you, Erica, for uh, writing those lovely things. Let's see. I like her name, says Yari. Yes. We all love Destiny's name. Uh, Jesse says, beautiful Destiny. Uh, another Jess says, Okay, here's a question from Jess. Mm -hmm. Many European countries are already in the forefront of environmental awareness. What have you learned about other challenges they face, Belgium in particular, regarding environmental issues? Yeah, good question. Thanks, Jess. Yeah, that's a great question. So I absolutely love Europe. And one of the reasons why I do love Europe is because they do a great job at keeping their streets clean. So when I was traveling a lot, especially when I was in Belgium and I was in Spain, there wasn't as much pollution, but what I realized that they have a problem with is traffic. So I think that they should be promoting more carpooling and public transportation. Okay, that, that is a good, good proposal. I actually, my first, I actually went to uh, Denmark back in uh, August, 2015, and I was amazingly impressed by the country's cleanliness. I mean, Denmark, uh, if you haven't been there, I recommend that you put in your bucket list because Denmark is, is, a, is a very flat country. So 95% of the Danes actually use bikes to commute, to travel. And they have all these amazing flat lanes where bikers can just like, you know, uh, drive, drive by and whatnot. So yeah, Denmark's very clean. And um, uh, I went to, I've never been to the Netherlands, but I think the Netherlands also has one, is one of the most progressive countries in yeah. Europe as far as environmental awareness is concerned. Um, Spain, I've never, been to, I've never been to Spain. France, I lived there for a year, you know, as an exchange student, but they're not as progressive yet compared to the other, uh, other, other countries, but hopefully that, that'll change. Moving on, July 11, you went back to Vietnam with Lindsay to attend Miss Ethnic Vietnam. Tell us about that. That is a very unusual title for a pageant. What is that about? Miss Ethnic Vietnam, they're looking for an overall role model for the entire country of Vietnam. So not necessarily to the winner will not necessarily go to a pageant, but be very hands on within her country, promoting the different ethnic groups, the food and tourism. So they were looking for someone who had leadership skills, someone who was relatable as well. So I think they selected the right candidate for that. And the pageant was 
amazing. The dancing was great. The live entertainment. Overall, they put on a very, very well executed production. That's amazing. Did, did you get new clothes? <laughs> I did get a dress. Yes, I got some some dresses. And again, my stylist, Yuna, she didn't, she, I love her to death. Uh, she gave me some really beautiful earrings. So this year I'm learning that I love earrings. Before I was never really a jewelry person, but now I feel like earrings definitely bring out the face and they can yeah. contribute to your outfit. So how many how many clip-on earrings do you have now? I don't have any clip-on, so I actually really? have, no, I have holes in my ear. <laughs> yeah, <Okay. laughs> I have them pierced. Uh, so now I probably have well over like, hmm, I want to say over 20, 25 earrings. Ooh, okay. Not bad. Not bad. You know, actually, my, I don't have any earrings myself, but if I were to own earrings, I would love to wear one of those big, humongous chandelier earrings. Oh, yes. They, they look yeah. very heavy, but but they really, really enhance uh, a woman's beauty face, mm -hmm. like, like like yours. You know, I think you should, yeah, try wearing one of those like big, humongous chandelier earrings. I'm literally diamond studded. They're in my apartment in the city, so I came here. I didn't even bring my makeup bag. I didn't even bring my earrings. I left everything in my apartment. So I'm like, I'm just coming here to see my grandma, my dog, my dad. That's great. Um, viewer, Travel Junkie is asking, hello, Destiny, any place or islands in the Philippines you want to visit? I am open to all recommendations. So I'm someone I don't really plan in advance. So if I get there and they're like, hey, you need to go here. Okay, let's let's go. <laughs> I think, so I think, um, yeah, I, Condé Snass Traveler Magazine, and I think several other Travelers Magazine actually made a list of the best islands in the world. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Boracay, uh, which is a very famous beach, famous in the Philippines for its white sand and whatnot. I think it's one of the best beaches on the list and also Palawan or El Nido. Uh, mm -hmm. Filipino viewers, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe they're uh, El Nido in, in the island of Palawan and also Boracay are two of the best beaches in, in the entire world. So yeah, when you, I'm sure you will probably end up visiting those two islands. Yeah. Okay, perfect. <laughs> they owe you this, Destiny, they owe you. <laughs> Okay, you've been cooped up in your little apartment, you know, while you were competing virtually. Now it's time to get out and, and see travel uh, the mother country, the Philippines. That's good. Uh, August 17th, you went to Brooklyn, New York. You attended a Queens uh, gala held in Brooklyn, New York, because I think you, you hooked up. It was a, uh, an event. Uh, sponsored and organized by the Belizean community, correct? Correct, the Belizean community. Okay, how was how was that experience like? So it's always fun to meet Belizeans outside of Belize because our population is so small. We have four hundred thousand people, four hundred thousand. So it's very rare to meet a Belizean outside of Belize. Uh, so it's so fun to see what the Belizeans in the diaspora have been doing to keep the culture and the tradition alive. So this was just one of those events to showcase mm -hmm. our civic pride. So I was very happy to be invited, and I went to university in New York. So it was great to be back on my old stump and grounds. They celebrated the queens. So we've had queens from, from the 1990s that were present and different pageants and organizations uh, to represent Belize. So it was just amazing to connect and network with them. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Hopefully this is going to be an annual event. They'll keep inviting you back, right? Hopefully. Hope. Yeah. <laughs> um, August 28th. Another important, wonderful, amazing date. You went to Africa, to Nigeria. Is this your first time? That was my first time in Africa, first time in Nigeria. So it was very special. The entire trip was uh, spiritual, very spiritual for me as well. And you were there to also attend the uh, coronation of Miss Earth Nigeria 2022. Yes. Were you, did you judge that pageant or were you just there? I Judge, I was just a special guest. Special guest. Okay. By the way, the new, the new queen from Nigeria is stunning. Yes, Esther. And she's a sweetheart. Yeah, she is gorgeous. I think she is one. Uh, I think she's going to make the cut. You know, I, she's just amazing the way she speaks, her elegance, mm -hmm. her her style. I mean, she, she screams like queen. Okay, just crown her now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's just beautiful. So great. So what is it about Nigeria that really, uh, that you love the most about the country? Even though in the first Every, 
there's a joy there. Definitely. I think what I love most about every country is their people. And Nigeria, they, they definitely didn't disappoint. Everyone is so welcoming and so friendly. And on top of that, they all have a deep level of spirituality, which I definitely admired. Everyone was so poised and thankful and grateful for life and giving thanks. And that definitely inspired me as well. Wonderful. That's great. I've never been to Africa. I've always wanted to go there. It's, it's a huge continent, very, very diverse. You know what? One of these days, you and I should travel together. You know, let's visit. Let's <laughs> let's travel. I want to see Morocco. I want to see Egypt. Same. I want to see. And I want to see Cameroon. You know, we'll go. Or South Africa. I've never been to South Africa. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Now, um, a month later, this uh, you posted a poem on your Instagram, which I, which really touched me profoundly. And I thought it was, it was just amazing. I'm gonna read it. Okay. You wrote, I was taught how to love in Italy. I was taught how to dance in Spain. I got my heart broke in New York, then went to Belize to numb my pain. Ba -bum. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. How, you know, so, this, the simplicity of the poem, but yet it's so deep. It's just so psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually deep. What inspired you to write this poem? Uh, so I'm actually writing another book right now, another book of poems. And that po that's not the, the full poem. That was just a snippet of it. So there is more to that. And I was just reflecting on my travels, reflecting on my year and all the places that I've been and how they've all inspired me or taught me something one way and another. And that's just what it was to give thanks and to share my story of what I learned in these different countries and places. Okay, that's wonderful. You know what? A lot of people don't know, but Destiny here, she is a published poet. Okay, before, before beauty pageants, she was already writing great poetry. Uh, you know, just, did you ever compete in poetry slams? competitions? No, I've just done it. I've just volunteered and okay. spoke. Okay. So are you, I, I think, I'm, I'm just guessing, but I think you, you will write another book of poetry, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm working on one right now. Okay. Okay. That's one of, so I, I can't, I can't wait to look forward to it. I mean, I, I'm really like, I can't wait because it's just your palm, your palms are just so inspirational and very deep. So yeah, people, once her new book of poetry is out, buy it right away. Uh, now, October 8th, you made it on the cover of In the City magazine. Mm -hmm. How was that experience like? So it was right after I got off the plane from Nigeria. I had one or two days in Atlanta, Georgia, and a friend of mine said, hey, Jess, my friend has this magazine. You definitely need to connect with him. You'll be in Georgia. So it ended up working out completely um, like Everything ended up going very smooth. They put me in a hotel. They made sure I was accommodated for for everything. And the next day I shot this beautiful cover. I had about three different looks and we didn't know which one was going to make the cover, but nonetheless, they all came out amazing. The entire team was top notch professionals. Everything was absolutely fabulous. Yeah. I actually like this cover. I really do. Um, so I would, I would thank everything Every piece that you're wearing is sustainable, mm -hmm. I guess. Yes, yes. Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah, I, I just love, yeah, I, I love the whole artwork too, the, the creativity mm -hmm. and this one too, yeah. I just feel like it was so fitting as well, having Fauna being our theme this year for Miss Earth. So I def they definitely took that into full consideration. Okay, yeah. Wow, beautiful, gorgeous. Love it, love it, love it, love it. Yeah. Now, Let's move on. October 11th was, is a, was the 10th anniversary of the International Day of the Girl. Okay, again, another significant important uh, day uh, because uh, in many parts of the world, uh, you know, women, especially little girls, do not have the same recognition or do not share the same recognition and, and significance as boys usually do. And I think one thing, you know, that that really saddens me is because in, in, in many parts of the world, they give preference to boys 
than to girls. Okay, I know in some cultures, in some countries, you know, where uh, abortion uh, sadly is still is very rampant. When they find out that the unborn fetus is a girl, they would do everything in their power to eliminate this fetus because they think that girls serve no purpose. They, they prefer boys and stuff. So again, that's one thing that really, really bothers me as a human being, because it's just so sad. You know, we, we really have to educate ourselves and to really literally force ourselves to, believe, to, to, to accept the fact that boys and girls are the same, men and women are the same. We all, we all have the same color of blood, which is red. Okay, we all, we all think, we all have the capacity to think, et cetera. So yeah, it's, it's really time to, to set our, our differences aside and treat each other as equals because that's the only way we can improve the human race, okay? People remember that, people remember that. So International Day of the Girl, we have to start loving our girls. We have to start educating them. We have to provide them with every opportunity to, to, to advance in life. We actually, we definitely have to encourage them 100%. Now, do you see yourself, because um, I know Oprah Winfrey, when she visited uh, South Africa years ago, she was so touched by, by the misery and the plight of young South African girls that she ended up actually building a school uh, to help educate these girls. And do you see yourself maybe doing a similar thing in the future? So I did do and host a summer camp. So I don't know if you had saw that. Um, so that was earlier. I want to say maybe in July or August. And it was a two week long program for girls in, in which we showed them and taught them how to speak, how to maintain great posture, how to ask open ended questions. And we brought in multiple speakers to boost their confidence and give them self esteem. And that's something that is very passionate it's a, it's a passion project for myself. I want to be in a position, so I'm hoping that God continues to bless me so I can bless others to be in a position to really make a significant change within my community. And as much as you know, we say, you just have to have heart and passion because you do have to have those things, but you also need to be able to fund. You have to have resources in order to do these things. So I am praying and hoping that I continue to have these resources and have them accessible to me so I can put them back in my community. Um, and of course you wrote, and I quote, a better future for girls is a better future for all of us. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Definitely, totally agree, totally agree. October 21st weekend, you went to Miami, Florida. I believe you attended uh, an event called La the Latin X Travel Summit. Tell us about about that experience? Yeah, so the Latinx, they are a community, a travel community in which they promote tourism and specifically within the Latina community. So usually um, people of color were not necessarily always shown in the mass media when it comes to luxury traveling. So this is what that group tries to promote. Like, hey, we're here, we're traveling. We love luxury as well. We love to see the world. So I was sent there on behalf of Belize to really showcase the beauty and wonders that Belize has to offer and also talk about my entrepreneurship endeavors as well, along with another, another group of panelists who were also incredible, who are also incredible entrepreneurs with amazing stories to tell. So I'm hoping that my story definitely resonated with a lot of people in the audience. Wonderful, yes. And of course, from Miami, you flew to Colombia. <laughs> you were there uh, as a special guest of Miss Earth Colombia. Um, what was the first impression? What was your first impression of, of the country? I smiled as soon as I was in the plane and we were descending. I just couldn't help but smile. Every time I go to a new place, I feel like a sense of gratitude just take over my entire body. So I was happy tears, like in the corners of my eyes, just smiling. Everyone was so friendly and it was very, very diverse there. And the specific yeah. region that I was in, Cali, they were known for their music and their dancing and their, they have a huge um, Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Latina, um, you know, they have a population. So I was very, very happy to emerge within that culture. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you know, Colombia is one of the countries that produce uh, the most amount of coffee in the world. Yes. Right, Colombian I, coffee? I do not drink coffee. So you, don't, I didn't. You, don't, you and Lindsay Coffee, what is wrong with you girls? You guys are not normal. Yes. I don't drink coffee. I have a very sensitive stomach, so coffee just does not sit well with my stomach. Okay. Uh, so what did you try for as Colombian, for Colombian food or drink? I had a lot of natural juices, which was really amazing. And then they have this mm-hmm. one fruit. I, I don't want to mispronounce it, but it was Lulo or something along those lines. Uh, it was very acidic, but uh, muy bien. Yeah. Is it like, what color is it? The, the it was fruit. orange, yellow, yellow with a lot of seeds inside. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so like pomegranate, I guess. Oh, uh, <laughs> and I had their samosa. Oh, amazing. Wonderful. Yeah, so that was, uh, yeah, that was, okay, October 22nd. So, of course, obviously, today's October 27th, and then you're, you're preparing yourself to travel to the Philippines. Um, question from G. Graham, Destiny. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to pass your crown to the next Miss Earth? I am definitely ready to pass my crown. I feel like I've done so much this year, and I'm ready to pass the torch on to the next delegate. I'm obviously going to miss my reign however I know deep down inside I'll always be Miss Earth 2021 from Belize and no one can ever take that away from me but you're I'm at a sense of peace I'm at a sense um, at a place of content and I'm very proud of myself and I know I'm going to continue to do wonderful things so now it's time for another young lady to rise above and take take on the crown. That's great. You know, as you, I started watching the uh, the virtual introductions and the presentations of, of all the contestants, and just before you showed up, I was telling our viewers that this year is so competitive because there's so many strong and amazing delegates, and they all speak eloquently. They they all speak very very well, and well, except for the um, internet connection, which right. comes on, comes off, that could be really very annoying. But other than that, if you have the patience, if you know everybody out there has the patience to uh, to watch the virtual introductions, go see them. Because to me personally, you know, first impressions count the most. Um, I think, you know, you can, you can put your best picture on your social media account, your, your best video presentation. But I want to hear you speak. What's, okay. what's between your ears? You know, I want to see, I want to see your personality. I want to, I want to, you know, tell us about your, your, your true self, you know, apart from what I see, all the glamour and the filtered and the heavily Photoshopped pictures that you post on your social media account. Okay, girl. Okay. I don't want that. I want to see how you speak your personality. So I think that's one of the reasons uh, why, you know, you won Miss Earth is because you, you come across, you came across as somebody who's just so genuine and sincere. You're not flaky you're not condescending you're not uh presumptuous you're just very genuine you're very sincere and that's why people love you you know for who you are now what advice would you give to the delegates who are competing this year i mean at least the best advice you could give them to those who are watching a lot of them have been messaging me asking for advice so i always tell them the same thing that I told our Miss Earth Belize, if you know it's going to rain, bring an umbrella. And I just say that because in pageants, you know what they're judging you on, you know what the segments are going to be. So if you are preparing ahead of time, then you already know what is to come. So prepare and practice as much as you can and don't pretend to be someone you're not because if you win the crown, now you have to put on this facade for a year and that's gonna be so draining and tiring. So you want to go in being yourself, showcasing your personality and that should take you far. Mm-hmm. I would recommend to these girls, okay, you are already judged from the moment you post your social media picture yes. or video. Pe- you know, People are judgmental. Remember, we're living in a social media age right now. Okay. Very true. Yeah. So once all these virtual activities are done, you take the plane, you fly to the Philippines and stuff, and you're already judged for the moment you land in the Philippines, in the country, at the airport. This is where the public, the press, the media will be asking you all these questions. You know, some of them probably will, will be going to be very difficult or very challenging. 
sometimes embarrassing questions, but you should be ready to be able to respond, to answer to all these questions with a lot of smile, okay? With a lot of poise and charm and personality. Yeah. And please never leave your room without makeup. <laughs> important, very important, because again, people will judge you by your appearance. And first impressions, you know, count in a beauty pageant. It's a beauty pageant for people, Pete say. Now, uh, what is next for Destiny Wagner after Miss Earth? So I've been getting that question a lot and I've been planning everything my entire year on my calendar. So what's next for me? I'm just gonna flow like water and I wanna tell everyone it's okay to not know your next move and it's okay to not know where you're going, what you're gonna be doing after this. Um, that's 100% okay. So I'm at the point where I know the direction that I'm going in. However, I don't know the exact steps to, to necessarily take. I'm just gonna take everything one day at a time, whatever happens, it was meant to be, but I'm also going to be putting in the work as well to get to where I want to go. Perfect. That's good. That's good. Um, any message to your followers, to your viewers, your fans who are watching the show from all over the world? Last message before you give up your crown. <laughs> well, definitely tune in to watch the remainder of the delegates in the competition. Thank you all for following me and supporting me on my journey. This is not the last of me. Other amazing things are coming and they are in the works. So I look forward to meeting you all in the Philippines and I can't wait to see you all. Mwah, mwah, peace and love always. Woohoo! Listen, I can't thank you enough for granting this opportunity to, uh, to chat with you. Again, um, you know, I really wish you the best of luck, you know, in your professional and, and uh, personal endeavors after your reign. And we will definitely be following your journey to the Philippines. You know, I'm sure you can have a good time and the Filipinos will definitely embrace you with open arms and treat you like a queen for sure. So before I let you go, I'm gonna give you again, virtual kisses and virtual hug, the best of hugs. And we're gonna be looking forward to see you place that crown on your new successor. Don't people don't forget the finals of Miss Earth 2022 is November 29th and it'll take place at the Okada Hotel in Manila, the Philippines. So we're looking forward to that coronation. And Destiny, wish you well. Thank you, people. Thank you for watching and love, peace, and unity and love, Mother Earth. Bye, honey.